Good morning, Esther's Crown Prayer Wall. Good day, God's blessings. Good day, God's richest blessings. This is the day the Lord has made. He made it. Amen. He made it. Our footsteps ordered of Him, our hearts open, apply, pliable, and ready. Um, our responsibilities and accountability and loyalty and reverence and awe, just being committed to walking in him, ready to just know what he's saying to us personally, what his word tells us about the new day, the new mercies, compassion that never fails. He's a good, good father. I hope and pray that everyone listened to that um, yesterday from the the platform and the, um, and the social media when we, we did the um, I don't know what on the replay I'm not sure what wall you're on or what platform you're on but we we announced at the end of our prayer session to just turn on Chris Tomlin good good father and, and surround sound it and sing it and just reverence the Lord um, come before his, uh, his courts with thanksgiving in your hearts and praise on your lips me too we enter in that way we enter in before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in our heart in our heart we stand before him upright remember David said creating me a, a clean heart don't take your spirit from me an upright spirit so there's so much truth in the word towards our own the way we stand the way we walk we can glean from others Ruth and Esther as ladies and um, you know, John and Paul and, and David as men and just even in our own hearts, gender related, male and female, just the way that the men and women of God postured themselves before the Lord. I mean, Anna was a prophetess, you know, and she was mighty. She never remarried. She was only married a short time, but chose to stay single, widowed unto the Lord. And I mean, for many years, so many years, like, you know, you and I would be like, whoa, that's a long time to just be in the temple prophesying a single woman, widowed woman in the temple, praying, fasting and prophesying. So whatever our, um, our heart is, you know, whatever we're looking for and we see in others and we read the Bible and we... You know, maybe read about Elijah and how in his gifting of God, he was able to um, deposit a double portion. You know, just not so much getting into the theological end of things, which is really good. The study of the word and, and history is wonderful. I'm not dismantling, dismissing it at all. But if it supersedes faith and you know, spiritual application and learning of wisdom, godly wisdom. The wisdom God imparts to us is wisdom from above. It's not sensual. It's not earthly. It's not in an intellectual way. Wisdom that comes from God comes from above. It's higher, more educated than being educated. So it has a super, um, supreme, superior, above. So when we do get, like, understanding and wisdom when we step into Bible knowledge our knowing of when history events world events why there will be you know a lot of people are like well how do you know yeah how do Christians know that like the Antichrist will come out of the Middle East or you know it's these are not speculations about end time happenings it's it's actually through scholar study it you know, through um, doctors of biblical studies, research, aligning history. So we don't want to dismiss that. But when we talk about like having a, a gift or an office position, a double portion, I think a lot of what happens is in order to receive everything that happened Old Testament to New, it's almost as if in the intellect of the person, human intellect, is more responsive if we see it as something past tense. So it's understood as, oh yeah, they had the right to be that. Or in their time, God moved like that. 
you know, so, but for us, it's almost like we're just the aftermath of something that was never intended to belong to us. And, you know, I've tried to explain to people that if that theory or concept is true, that, you know, this was just an events time book. And yes, <clears throat> you know, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we have uh, an ability to be born again now. If all this is true, then why would salvation still be for today? Like, if all that was for their time, you know, even Paul's time, the gifts and, <clears throat> excuse me, different things like that, then why is salvation still for us? Why, um, why is there a need for intercessors? You know, even in the, in Revelation, when it's the description, um, John, sorry, he's been really riled up today, so I could probably go back and forth in the house, out of the house, and he'll still be going at it. Um, but even like when John was, was revealing what, um, God had, had shown him and communicating, um, there was the breakdown of the saints that have gone on before us. And it was communicated that they actually are positioned. You know how the word says Old Testament to New, the angels basically have one function in heaven. Um, there's well, different angels, but the, the main function of a group of angels is to be surrounded, encamped around the throne, singing holy, 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 night and day. Well, then as John was brought into this vision, he saw the saints that they were standing kneeling before the throne of God they were there before the throne of God and the prayers of the saints so you have the angels you have the ones that have gone before us but the prayers of the saints were rising to the throne as like incense so I mean so I believe for myself personally it's not to fantasize about the word or bring it into some kind of childlike fantasy. It's to actually be able to receive it through the eyes of, of faith, which is which the Bible refers childlike. Like Jesus, he addressed the people in his day, <clears throat> the religious people, as blocking the door, not willing to go into kingdom for themselves, but also standing in the way preventing others because others were like offended by their works or disappointed by them or, you know or believe the lie of what they say so we just gotta um i always say know for yourself find out for yourself if there's something that you're discerning god is moving in you about or trying to show you or reveal then dive in with god dive in if you're you and I are born again, and we've had a tangible experience of a supernatural, then that same place that we know, we're confident it was God, is that same place that we can carry on in. Same spirit, you know, um, same knowing. So, let me, I'm going to try. I've been putting them outside, inside. We'll see if it'll work. Good morning. Yeah, the kingdom of God is at hand within arm's reach here now. Amen. Amen. And I'm so blessed, Lauren, to just um, see that you're like, we're like-minded and, and crystal and different ones on here. Because in the times we're in, kingdom revelation needs to be learned, like received. It's, it's demonstration power. Jesus brought it. it in, we inherited it. it we inherited, um, so yes, now we spread it. Like, you know, talked about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is like a liken to a mustard seed that went into the ground and grew and, and all the branches just, you know, blossomed out and even the birds nestle inside those branches. It became this, this tree of safety, this place of protection where we could gather and multiply and increase and so this is the kingdom, you know, when Jesus, when that seed, he said, lest a seed, he was, you know, he was talking to his disciples. He always spoke in parables too. So that makes it hard for the intellectual mind 
or scientific mind to receive because they can't put one and one, two and two together. Um, but he said, unless a seed fall into the ground and die, and he was talking about his, his life, unless a seed fall into the ground and die, it can't bring forth. So when right now, if I go out in the garden or you go out in your garden and we plant a seed, that seed dies. It's buried under the soil. And then the, here, the miracle, the miracle of life is being produced through the death of that seed that was sown into the ground. And then we, <clears throat> like in the parable, we have a mustard seed makes a tree. You know, um, there's different references that trees are watered by the, the streams and referring to us as a tree of righteousness being watered by the life of the spirit, by the word of truth. So let me try to put them out. I hope this isn't going to, just give me one minute. It may be back and forth. I hope, pre, please pray. He has been, yeah, he's been really riled up today and Crystal couldn't take him. So just, just <laughs> please pray. I'll be right back. Just ask God to let him rest, rest. And he likes to sunbake outside. So the sunbake. barks out there for a while it'll be okay as long as he settles down once he barks for a while so <laughs> welcome 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 so i wanted to um well a couple things i had a not so good dream it wasn't of the lord i know it's not if you ever have a dream that you just feel uck you know yuck this isn't god just go ahead and rebuke it don't think on it don't let it linger um you know, speak to your soul and your mind, calling forth that you're born again, that you're cleansed, you're healed. You know, sometimes it's simply, I, the closer, listen, the closer we get to God, because God has clearly indicated that we are subject to our environment. You know, what we hear, what we listen to, the people around us. I mean, I remember as a um, young girl that, there was some friends that I had and one was directly involved in the occult in witchcraft and she was extremely depressed and had a lot of things going on and you know I suddenly became not externally I didn't wear the black and all that other stuff but internally I just like overnight became heavily depressed and I mean so there's you know the Bible talks about there's transference and and things we become subject to our environment and you know they say you are who you hang out with a little bit well you know, if you hang out with somebody that has an addiction and and you're not very well guarded and your convictions aren't super strong in God then eventually you might say oh I'll try it yeah okay let me try that let me try that so it, it doesn't start overnight usually but so the same the same thing is true about like if we have dreams you know, I, I know some, I've talked and counseled some young people in the past that had a reoccurring, what they labeled as a nightmare, where fear, it was a very fearful, scary dream, and they kept having the same dream several times throughout the year. And I was like, that is not of the Lord. And that's not, it was like a, a tormenting thing. So... And, you know, later it was that we found that one of the parents was extremely fearful, panic, anxiety. So there was a, there was a reason, there was an open door there um, to the occult or to occult activity, demonic. So for me, though, I think, um, you know, it goes a little deeper. To me. Sometimes like, because I don't dream like that. And I, I have, I, God has gifted me from a little girl to actually have dreams and get even given me the interpretation and they come true they're on larger scales um i dreamt of the twin towers before it happened um it's like the year before it happened i didn't know exactly where i was but it was a big city and i saw rolling smoke coming out of these 
two big large buildings that I was up in. I in the top of that building and then the next thing I know I was on the ground watching it. So I saw that. I saw um I'm trying the Louisiana um hurricane that went through and like devastated Louisiana. I mean I know they've had a couple, but there was one major one. I actually dreamt that before it happened. I wasn't sure where I was, but it was an older neighborhood with the houses just like they are in Louisiana. And the waters were up to the attics. And I mean, I was going door to door trying to get people out because the water was rising and rising. So, so there's different things. I, I've dreamt a lot of things that have happened in my life that I didn't, I didn't understand. I, I mean, I didn't know that, that God does um, communicate to us that way at the time. So, but last night I had one that I clear, I absolutely know that it wasn't of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> I had a Zoom meeting last night and um, my speaker phone was on and connection through the phone and I don't know I <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever felt like uncomfortable about something like not it wasn't a person I just I said oh I get this sucky feeling like and I just had this uncomfortable feeling while I was on there was several of us unmuted talking at the same time we all love the Lord, but you know, everybody's at different levels and has different things in their beliefs and different things going on. So I just pretty much attributed it to that. Um, but yeah, there was a dream and I'm like, no way, not God unclean out you go and just rebuked it. So I felt like sharing that this morning, a word of information, um, experience is if you have a dream, like, you know, there's just some dreams like because people used to ask me, well, how do I know which ones of the Lord or not? Well, there's just some you know. You just, you know, if it defiles the word, goes against the the word, and it's anywhere in the flesh where the flesh is working or something is trying to mysteriously, um, you know, come against the work of God in your life, like sabotaging or whatever, then you know. You know that's not God. God would not bring a dream like that. He would not set us up like that. So you just you just stand against it and don't receive it. And, you know, the big thing about dreams when they're not of God is that you get them out of your intellect too. Like get them out of the subconscious, the conscious. Wash it clean with the word. Start reading the word. Tell, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Whatever doors open, avenue you've come through. I shut that door right now. Father, send angels to guard over me as I sleep, as I rest. You know, may my, you know, he even said you lie down and your, your sleep will be sweet. You know, you'll have sweet rest. That's the type of rest that God is talking about. So, so yeah, I just stood up and I was like, no, no, rebuke you. You're out. You know, that's it. No more. <clears throat> so, and it happens. I mean, I know it happens to a lot of people a lot more than they want to confess. Because when a, a, you know, a fearful dream or something comes in where it seems like we're doing something, <laughs> you know, I've had people come to me and go, hey, I was in a bank and I was like stealing stuff out of the vault and, you know, really timid, beautiful servants of God, like I was just taking everything and, you know, and let a man examine himself. I'd, I'd say to them, I, di I didn't then, but my first move would be like do you have anything in you that you know feels like you have to take because somebody's not being appreciative or giving so but but then all in all round and round example with us right here is no it's the enemy trying to make you think you're doing something wrong you know if your heart's given over to god you don't have any thieving spirit in you you know you love the lord you've never you would you wouldn't steal or you haven't since you've been washed clean and you know then yes it's the enemy trying to get in so just rebuke those things there's a lot of dreams like that i have people wake up and gosh i've woken up where i was like running through a swamp um my feet landing on the heads of alligators you know trying to get away from them because they were everywhere <laughs> just oh my gosh you know so there's a lot going on and and some of it is warnings about the people you're around or different things but always run it by the holy spirit the holy spirit is our helper now if you want to write that down somewhere or whatever the holy spirit is my helper is your helper that's the problem with um religion or 
you know, condemnation of mistakes and stuff, we get this fear of the Lord in the wrong, um, the wrong respect. So instead of fearing him as in reverencing awe, wouldn't want to disappoint him or ever let him down because he's so amazing and he is Abba Almighty God. And he, did, you know, he said, love me first, all your affections, that kind of fear. Instead of that, it goes into the wrong, like, we try to hide something from him or we feel condemnation and shame and guilt instead of that friendship with the Holy Spirit, you know, our helper connecting and, and just con confessing and coming clean. And something I was thinking about today as God was leading me this morning, I, I, I heard clearly, I was like, Lord, what is our message today? And I heard the um, scriptures that we're about to read here in a minute, but, um, you know, as believers, we're challenged with, oh, you call yourself a Christian, a Christian wouldn't do that. You know, people of God forgive, they don't hold grudges, they don't, but, and this is true. I mean, this is true. Like the people of God are supposed to repent quickly and move on and forgive the offense and things. Very much true. And, but I think you got to discern where it, what it's if it's in your own mind like fear condemnation offense guilt or if it's somebody's words coming at you 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 have to understand bring it before the lord in your own heart because the word tells us to do those things first and foremost for you and god for me and god and then obviously for god and them and for us and them so this is just speaking of if somebody, you know, I, I, I was reflecting back on cancer and years and years ago, you know, my dad and I hadn't talked for years and a dream came to me and, and I went to talk to him and he was like, I could read his thoughts in the dream. His thoughts were, you haven't talked to me in all these years. Why would you want to talk to me now? So no matter whose fault it was, the argument, the disagreement, whatever severed it, inside of him was an offense and a wound and a hurt so god had me go um you know as being the more responsible in god god had me go and do something and it actually broke the spirit of cancer off of both of us the attempt that it was trying to have on me which i believe there was allowed not god willed but allowed to get my attention to how he needed to be released and then years later, of course, I, I, I believe through his his own wife and things, they may have been combative or had some issues themselves. And I believe my dad, that offense spirit came back again. You know, I remember um, just quickly, and I always share my life and examples because God has given me the platform to do that, to help others. Um, but it was Thanksgiving and he was, you know, cancer, just cancer was back. My dad battled cancer probably four or five different times. And I mean, he was a fighter, loved life, just a fighter. And I, I believe that in that last marriage, um, again, there was some things going on between them, incompatibility, like not everybody's compatible. And, you know, <laughs> looking back at my marriage, neither one of us were compatible. I, I could sit and blame him and he could sit and blame me, but we just did, we had a compatibility issue. Um, but anyway, fast forward back to this Thanksgiving, we had went over there cause you know, we were told that his time was short, you know, things were happening, always believing for a miracle, but we brought a bunch of food over there and we put the spread out on the counters and everything. And him and his wife were at odds with each other. Like there was definitely offense and he would not come to the table and eat. And with the cancer and chemo, he didn't have an appetite anyway. So just imagine the compilement of offense, combativeness, um, not hungry. So everything was there. And I just, the Lord just quickened me to go over there. He was sitting in the recliner. Everybody had sat at the table and had, you know, bowed their heads, ready to pray and stuff. The Lord said, go over there and tell him to come to the table. Well, you know, when the Lord tells you to do something, you know, the fruit's going to be good <laughs> or whatever fruit comes from it, you know, it belongs to God anyway. So I went over there and I said, dad, I said, listen, it's Thanksgiving. You know, we came all this way 
to have a, to sit and have a meal with you. And I and he wouldn't even look at me because not because of me. He was upset with his wife. And I said, "Look at me, Dad." And he kind of looked in my eyes and said, "I want to have a meal with you. I want to sit and eat Thanksgiving with you." And you know, I believe at that moment that God had communicated love, the spirit of love, like, you know, people say the spirit of Christmas, but Thanksgiving is a time of gathering, of giving thanks, of laying down our problems, our indifferences, of, you know, so, because I'll tell you what, right now, happiness is an inside job. Mm-hmm. You, you and I, we might make somebody, we might relieve their symptoms of being miserable or unhappy or whatever we might relieve it temporarily but if they don't get that or i you don't get it from the lord in inside um like detoxification you know inside miracle change transformation cocoon i'm here to be free if we don't experience that a person doesn't give that like i hear some people go oh they make me so happy and i'm like uh because that's because here that happiness isn't on the that's based on that person's personality, character, whatever. Which all of us know we're all flawed without you know the presence of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So and something like that, yeah. Anyway, it's not it, you got to have more stability than that than a person making you happy. Happiness has to be joy is our strength. Joy is a third of the kingdom. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Joy is what God gives on the inside. Jesus for the joy set before him. You know, Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, um, Psalms, David the writer, the weeping may endure for the night, joy cometh, my joy cometh in the morning, because the joy wasn't contingent upon a person. The joy was of the strength of the Lord. It was coming from God himself. Well, anyway, so dad gets up and... um, he walks over to the table. Well, I went, let me say this. I went back to the table first and he hadn't moved yet. I was like, ruh row. So we bowed our heads to pray. And as we were praying, we heard, you know, him moving about. By the time we were done praying, he was sitting at the table. And I said, Dad, you know, can I fix you a plate? And he said, sure, I'd like that. So... We, um, I went over, I put, I said, you want, you want certain things? You want a little bit of everything? And he said, I'll take a little bit of everything. So, and remember his offense wasn't with me. We had already made, you know, our peace about things and loved each other. And he was, he, I tell you, my dad from such a broken place of our relationship went to a place of every time we talked, whether we were right in each other's face or just we lived close I could you know, I could get there in 30 45 minutes at times but I mean or we were miles away from Schaumburg Illinois to Florida whatever it was he was always I'm so proud of you I'm so proud of you you know he wasn't demanding of anything because he had received inner healing now I'm only saying that not to compare him to anybody else but if you backtrack back to what I said my dream and vision was is why would you want to speak to me now so God had brought a complete healing cancer was healed things were done and then of course a root got in there I believe you know and I'm not talking about all diseases is based on you know something I I just say disease and sickness is not of God so we need to rebuke it and stand against it with everything we have um so he sits down, he eats, I fix him a little bit of everything. His whole plate was covered. I, I was, it wasn't like mounds, but it was a little bit of everything where you couldn't see the plate. And he, and then I offered him dessert. He ate every bit of it, every bit of it. Now this was like a miracle in itself. He got up and he, he excused himself. And we thought maybe he had gone to the bathroom Well, 10, 15 minutes goes by. And um, I said, you know what, I'm going to go check on him. And I walked into the room and he was laying on the bed. He had his feet crossed and he was looking up to the ceiling, just staring his hands crossed in his stomach on his lap, like his stomach laid back. And he had the most peaceful smile without showing his teeth and just 
there was something on his countenance like I had not seen before. And I walked over and I said, Dad, are you okay? And he, he nodded his head, yes. And, he, and he, he said, can I hold your hand? I said, yes. And we held each other's hand. And he, he looked into my eyes and he said, this is the best day I've had. And I said, me too. And he said, I love you so much. You know that, right? And I said, yes, I do. And I know, you know, he knew some things about the disease. And he knew that as much as he was trying, you know, to get healed, he fell when he was doing his treatments. And had he not fallen, he might be here today because they could have done surgery. So it's kind of like a one of those things like, oh, why did he fall? You know, and then having to go on and go and realize he's in heaven and he's with the Lord. Um, but let me say like, this is what I, I was awoken to today was I had to rebuke the dream, which was definitely not of God. And, you know, and I haven't done anything to actually invite it in. Trust me. <laughs> it's like, no. And, but I started to, I, I asked the Lord, I said, where are we going today on Esther's crown, God? And I heard the scriptures, which I had read on either Sunday or last or the Sunday before I, I had read, um, where Paul talks about, being crushed, persecuted. Well, we're going to read it here in a minute, but hard pressed on every side. And I'm like, Lord, that's just, is that where I'm going today? And that's what led me into offenses, you know, unforgiveness, um, different things where, and happiness and people. And, you know, we want that story that we want to read our life story and we want to read it from a place, especially our new start in God, where it goes smooth chapter, 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 and it's happily ever after. Um, but like I said yesterday, and I found the scripture last night, posted it to the wall today, is Jesus said in this life, you will have tribulation. So, but be of good courage for he has overcome those areas, those things. He's gone before us, even that devil, the tempter, in the wilderness, like a lot of people are like, well, I've got to overthrow him myself. No, we've got to step into the finished work of Christ. So now in our, in the divine place where Jesus himself has positioned us, the enemy's already been overthrown. So, you know, we walk as agents, we walk as representatives and ambassadors in this earth. And the more that we, um, we understand, we comprehend our position, then we realize we can say, get thee behind me, Satan, or I rebuke your tactics or your schemes. Step back, get away from my family, take your hands off of my health, you know, release and loose the pathway before me unto God. I choose this day whom I'm going to serve. You know, in, in, um, in Joshua, where he says, um, we just read this the other day too, where he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, in that same verse, he's talking about make the choice. He was making the choice for him and the people that were under his watch directly in his household that he could. I'm going to tell you, you may have someone in your household that is not allowing you to make that choice. And then if you or me, if any one of us allow all that emotional, um, you know, opposition to come in and start to nag or deteriorate, you know, chip away at our, our Christian, our good deeds, our good works, good fruits, good, you know, there's only, again, there's only so much you're going to be able to do for somebody that well, that internal wellness comes from the Lord. It's the fruit, the helper, the Holy Spirit. Like we help the helper. We're not the helper. We help the helper. You know, we're just his instruments, his servants. And, and Jesus said, your enemies will be those of your own household. Why? Because there's many of our own household, like I said with my dad that day, is his, his um, battle was not with me. And it wasn't with flesh and blood. It was with whatever hurt, whatever was holding on or lingering or expectation or whatever that was coming from his own wife. 
or maybe coming out of his own heart. But the point was, is, you know, we have to understand that there's, there's going to be limitations and boundaries. So as I was talking to the Lord about that this morning, what he was showing me, not because of something I'm going through necessarily, but as a leader and as a Christian sister to you, a Christian woman in the kingdom, that's, that's even hard enough is when God calls you to be a voice, you know? So, um, what he was showing me is that we can end up being, and forgive the phrase, but like a dartboard. He said fiery darts, fiery weapons, okay? Um, as like in our own circle of family, of friends, you know, now all of a sudden you're like the board to the darts. And and I got to say, if here's not, if we don't know the word properly, then we'll become that to the point of the bruising and the crushing and the damaging that aren't coming because we value um, the the fruit and, and being like Jesus said to Peter, you're going to forgive him. He said, how many times do I have to forgive him, Lord? He said seven times 70. But here, if, if that's you, if you're, you're that person and you're dealing with an issue with people or a, a church, a city, a nation, a congregation as a leader, a person, a daughter, son, if you're that person and you're dealing with that, okay, and they got that seven times 70 thing going on, um, then to you or to me, we're like, oh, we have to do this or this is our place to do this. And that's not what the Lord was saying to us. That, that's not it at all because yes he's telling us we have to forgive but if you're positioned as a board <laughs> I just, I'm just going back to that because the word says fiery dart so if you're positioned as, as a dart board then there's no boundaries for your own healing journey you know for your own relationship with God you know God didn't enslave us that's not what it says he set us free Galatians, for it is for freedom, liberty, for that reason that, that Christ has made you free, for that reason that you experience it. So here, we are to go the distance. He said, if somebody asks you to go a mile, go too, okay? But if we are directly being misused, mishandled, if we're, there's nothing we can do for someone else, you know, it, and I, this is sad to say, but this is obviously where the miracle takes over. But when the doctors are just, they, they tell somebody, I'm sorry, there's nothing, nothing more we can do. And that usually brings us into phase two of our healing journey, miracle bound, you know. I mean, and I'm not saying that's the right order, but that usually is what pushes us into believing for a miracle is the doctor said, I'm sorry, there's nothing else we can do, whatever. Well, in people relationship. There is nothing more we can do if the person, if there's a refusal from that person to correct themselves, to allow the work of the, of the Lord. I mean, that's the beauty. I said something last night in that class I was on. Um, where have you seen faith working where you actually didn't have to exercise and work faith? You know, like speaking to the mountain move or... Um, calling the things that aren't but it just just faith you know it seemed to just happen and I, I i i the only way i could explain it is how i could connect that was in the sovereignty of god when the sovereignty where you know a bill needed to be paid and i didn't so much even know yet or or i knew but i didn't even pray on it yet i was just like set it to the side and all of a sudden the money was there without me thinking about it, knowing about it, blinking an eye to it. So I was like, yeah, I can see faith working at work when my faith, they were saying when our faith is in Jesus instead of our faith being in our ability to have faith, which makes absolute sense. But for me, I took it a step deeper. I could actually see where faith, my faith in Christ or yours or you know, where it brings us to a place of maturity where the sovereign Lord, the sovereignty of God, 
And we don't talk about that a lot in the word, you know, or in, or in preaching sermons or, but it is the sovereign will of God, that purpose, you know, where God just is God and we're at the mercy of his goodness and of what he's doing and how awesome he is. So, so yeah, as we mature in the word, we'll know where boundaries, where things I've learned in my walk that I can go the extra mile and then another mile and God will allow me to do that. But I've also learned that it's not always beneficial or healthy for me to do so. And I'm the type of person, if you know me, even before I was born again, saved to the Lord, I had compassion for people like people that had were did wrong, like, you know, had issues. I mean, I went out and made friends with the troubleshooters and the, the problem makers and just in hopes that I could be some kind of light. And of course that failed and <laughs> I got sucked into the wrong and did made a lot of wrong choices. But my, my intention was good. My heart was good. I wanted so much to be there for them and make a difference. So even before I was born again, I would, I would go, I would, you know, if my friend was running away from home, I'd, I'd pack my bag and run away too, you know, so, um, so it's in me to be that way. But over the years of walking with the Lord, what I've realized more and more, and listen, this does not come overnight. This is something that comes through maturity and you have to know the boundaries of the word because the word gets twisted. The word, I, I remember there was a, someone in my life that was important in my life that I disconnected with for good reasons valid christian reasons just disconnected and i got a phone call one day and they found out i was a minister and you know what the the the, the, the only scripture i didn't hear any other scriptures come out of them was you know as a christian you're called to visit the prisoner you know that right and take care of the prisoner you're supposed to be sending money to the prisoner and you're supposed to and i was just like omg <laughs> it's like because here, back in the day when I didn't understand the word, and I didn't know that, you know, word is all the heart of God. The heart of God. It's not my heart. It's not your heart. It's God's heart. He's the author. And how we receive it is how our heart, he'll create in us a clean heart. He'll, you know, he'll transfer this just wealth of love. The spirit of God is love. For God is love. So all of this gets, you know, understood by us. So at that point when I heard that, I was like, Wow, that not I didn't say it, but I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what a way to twist something. What a way to like reverse it to fit the circumstance or the need and and then railing that, like I said, the dartboard and the dart. So, you know, I've learned that from years ago. And the more we mature, even just real quick and then we'll get to reading and I feel like God has me sharing on relationships. This started the early part of um, the new year. Like I started going back to the phone call I got to go counsel. And um, some of the things that I've, people have been coming to me to counsel about. And, and then for myself that I'm seeing just in the, in the world and the trouble and trials with relationships and in my own life too. But I, um, I've, I went back and I'm like, this has started from 2022 at the beginning where I, in, in here, I'll go on, I'll click on somebody's teaching or teaching course. And the main thing they're talking about is divisiveness. So it's not just me, like the church as this is, this is a project of the Holy spirit that there's this demand being put on. Um, this area to mature us, to open our eyes, to bring revelation of understanding. Because there's some people that won't listen to what the word says at all when it comes to a relationship or their relationship. And there's others that manipulate and word twist the word in their relationships. And then there's, and then there's the third party, which I've always been guilty of. And that's those who allow the misuse of a relationship or mishandling of it, not in intentional, but because they have no willpower or desire to correct their own self with God. You know, God wants us to be happy. It does. And, you know, we could say, well, if 
me, the cancer journey or single parenting or breakup of a marriage, I can use all those as excuses to um, dismantle the gift of joy, the fruit of the spirit in my life. I can, I can use all that or I can surrender myself and say more of you, God, less of me, more joy, more fruit, you know? I take a sip of water. Um, just a teaching. This has nothing to do with me personally. Well, <laughs> we all have problems. We all have face trials and relationships. But I mean, not something that I'm going to because the Lord's leading me to examine myself in this or examine others in this. Um, but this was, let me see if I read. This was in a teaching that I was... Um, listening to out of um, wisdom and what this man of God, great man of God, written many, John Maxwell, um, oh my gosh, leadership books, 36, probably, did he sell 36 million books sold? I, I don't know. It's, it's a large, <laughs> very large. I wrote one and I don't know, maybe 30 copies went out and I'm just like, whoa, I'm, so anyway, um, something he shared, and that's why I said this is since January 1st, family of God, January 1st, the leaders, the teachers, the Holy Spirit, um, songs, things that are coming forth are about relationships. And from my eyes and my perspective, if I'm the wounded soul, then my demand, my hurt is going to be towards you going the extra mile, doing everything you could possibly do and in my eyesight what you're doing is not enough if the role is reversed then this, the same thing is true for you with me and me with you and that's what God was saying this morning is yeah he was just on this about the pressures that we're facing as Christians as believers have to come with some of the outward outside connections that we have verbally emotionally you know the things around us so not only do we have the pressures of this life finances health um you know uh, job career but then we've got the relationship end of it and i do believe god is sparking this up for 2022 so john maxwell as i'm listening to him teaching he says this and i believe it was there was a couple teachers i'm pretty sure it was him um Divisive people all, always devalue people. And I mean, I just, it's not something I've ever heard in that um, content of how it was worded. And he matter-of-facted it. He didn't say sometimes, might, could. He said divisive people, people that are divisive, division, um, you know, they have stuff on the inside. Just divisive people devalue people. So because of what's inside of them, they cannot receive the value, the worth of the person in or the people in their life. And I mean, just so much truth. So much truth. I can remember um, Crystal. I don't think, is she on here? Hold on. Yeah. That's happened. Yes. The kingdom of God is. Let me read this. I'm reading comments here. That's happened to me before. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He is our comforter on standby for us and ever present. What a wonderful testimony of God's love. Yeah. With my dad, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yep. Treasure. Oh, oh what's happening to my thing? Treasures and jars. Yes. We've got to know God's word and study it. Being ready in and out of season, studying to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, so true. So true. Um, yeah, so I I know Crystal. Um, I'll just use an example. I, she knows she's not timid about me sharing with her. Her, her life is pretty open. Um, and I wouldn't share something she doesn't want me to share. But um, her granny they always had a troubled relationship. So there was always a spirit of division, divisiveness. And it, it was because of hurts. And it was because of things that Granny in her heart 
could not um, find a place to allow God in there to go ahead and justify that within her own self, clean it up, clear it out. And, and then, of course, Crystal was going through a transformation by the Holy Spirit where he was washing a lot of things clean, not just from Granny, but from her mom, from her dad, from you know, pastors in the church, different leaders that had disappointed her. So she's going through this cleansing anyway. Well, then sorrowfully and sadly, Granny gets dementia. But with dementia, you know, I mean, it's progressive. They say, unless in the name of Jesus, push that stuff back and stuff. But um, when it's progressive or stages of dementia, unfortunately, it got aggressive with granny and so those years of what was going on and everything that was happening because now there was a dementia diagnosis and symptoms going on that divisive spirit that division that was already there actually now could tuck behind an illness or engage with a, a professional diagnosis so, I mean, the weight and heaviness that was on Crystal was unbelievable. Unbelievable internally, externally. Just trying to walk it out with this relative grandma figure in her life whom there was always issues, but she still, they loved each other. They just had a lot of issues unresolved. Whereas, and again, Crystal and the Lord were working through hers internally but you can't force another person. And so I, I watched and witnessed this with Crystal. And I remember her testimony that she said to God after Granny had went on to be with the Lord. And, and Granny loved the Lord. She served in the church. I was the one. She was a battle tank. She was a battle tank. Okay. And um, when we, uh, after, after the service and everything like that, Crystal went into prayer because she had something specific that she wanted granny to know and she wanted god to be able to communicate that to granny and instead god opened up a heavenly revelation to crystal opened up manna from heaven and actually showed and revealed to crystal that life in heaven is not anything like life on earth and that what she would want to communicate to Granny can't even be communicated to Granny because that type of communication, that type of understanding that was here in the earth does not reside in heaven. And that day was just a great day for Crystal in the spirit, not because she was hurt because she did want to let this do something personal with Granny from here to there in her heart and dream and vision. But to get that kind of revelation, a lot of people don't understand about the celestial body, the new body, the um, there's no tears in heaven. There's no, like a lot of people think when they, oh, I'll just tell them I'm sorry when I get to heaven. There isn't that. That's not there. That place is not there. Yes, we see each other. We know each other, but we'll be known. It says that we're known as Christ is known. So we don't we're not given in marriage even though you may see your husband your wife your past you know yes we're going to see each other there but we're not given in a fleshly relationship we're not given in that um the works of the flesh the emotions as we know them on this side heaven is bliss heaven is a place of bliss so we transform in the blinking of a, the blink of an eye you know we're changed Amen. So, all right, I'm going to read in a minute. Let me get him in. We'll read and then we will uh, pray. Yep. So I felt this is the message of the Lord for us. 2022. It's not just me and you on here, us on here. It's for the body of Christ is to get, you know, they say, um, you know, go on the ball court, get in the ball, get in the game, get in the ball court, you know? So, Get in this place with God, in the word, with our helper, the Holy Spirit, with the people around us and everything else, and allow the Holy Spirit to mature us. Hold on, let me try to...
think I thought of years and now again. You know, allow the Holy Spirit to mature us. Amen. And then just season us. You know, French fries are good, but seasoned French fries are better. Come on. <laughs> yeah, let him season us. Let him um, reveal oh. to us. All right, let me try to get him inside. Let, it, let him reveal to us what our part is, the boundaries. So we know the difference. Jesus said if, a, you know, your enemy wants to smack you on one side, turn the cheek to, and, and turn your other side to him. But he also says in that same area, if your eye offend you or there's there's evil or sin or wickedness in your eye, take it out. Well, I'm sure he doesn't mean to take it out. Amen. So I'm sure he doesn't mean to let somebody sit there and hit you time and time again. So these scriptures, the way Jesus spoke, the parables, the passion the illustrations, the matter of facting all have to do with a spiritual condition of our own soul before the Lord. So let God show you. And I'll tell you this, the more you're willing to go with somebody, if a man asks you, a woman asks you to go a mile and you go with them too, the better it all is for that person that you you have a resilience you have a um you know something in you that can actually endure the hardness like timothy says as a good soldier endure it if there's something in you that god has given you like badger hide and you can do that that's amazing keep it going keep praying over it let the love of god be shed abroad in your heart and poured out to those around you absolutely but if it's for the overall well care of where God has brought you to your safety again if they're not willing the Bible all through the Bible says choose to each one of us choose you know even in the New Testament there's a re reaction to our action ask knock seek See, seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given. Knock and the door will be open. Repent and you will be forgiven. Love and you will experience God's love. See, there's fruit that comes out of our action. Us acting and doing something. But we cannot turn that on and off for other people. We're to be lights, not doormats. Lights, gates, doors, salt. Cities on a hill. Let them see the glory of God. In Exodus um. Maybe it's 24. Exodus, Exodus where Moses, with the Ten Commandments, after he had been in the presence of God, his face shone. And the people could see that there was something different about Moses. But it was still their choice. Look at what they did. They defied every commandment. Moses was the representative of God and loved them. And he spent countless hours Jesus, the Son of God, that says the light has come, but this is what this is the truth. This is the saying that men's hearts, that people's hearts preferred the darkness, so they rejected the gift of the Father. So for you and me, you know, you know, they say, hang tight, you know, hold on, hang tight. You're walking God, hold tight, hold fast sound doctrine hold fast your covenant with christ you know disallow things that um that are contrary to the whole counsel of the word if they're picking and choosing and they're trying to use your walk with god leaders go through this more than any other in the body of christ leaders are just <laughs> they have their own cross that they're held to and rightfully so should be i get that but when it comes to like, like I said, with my dad and our families and stuff, that was his wife. She was a position and, and a Christian. They're both Christians. Old age, got a lot going on. One was not worse than the other. One was not more important than the other. One was not more valuable than the other. They had a covenant responsibility to keep their relationship with Christ so guarded that the intimacy of the covenant of two becoming one complemented each other. 
each other like that's the the work of the flesh is to blame the other person the work of the flesh is to to say oh my gosh i've never been so hurt before i had that when my daughter was a teenager and i was a, a youth pastor and oh oh my gosh like i felt like my world was crushed at something she did and it wasn't even anything really big i just felt like it was done against the love that i had for her can you imagine how god feels like he's not a human i get it but jesus wept so he does have emotions he does have his heart you know he the sweat that was coming out of his pores to what he was about to do for all the world, unborn, born to all the world, was as blood. That's how stressful and painful this gift of love is. So yes, we're called to guard over, first and foremost, our relationship with Christ, with God, and next, our relationship with others. I leave to you these two commands. One that you love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your soul, all your heart, all your strength. And the second is like unto this, that you love your neighbor as yourself. Well, this is a process. And first and foremost, we have to make sure that our stand before God is one that is loving God in that place. Because when we do that, guess what? God shows us the boundaries. He, God, will, God can um, empower us to go to an unlovely, unfruitful nation, just like he did Old Testament and New, just like he sent Jesus. He said he couldn't do many miracles in his own hometown amongst his own people. That's why he was trying to say your enemies will be those closest. They'll, they'll remember you for what you did 10 years ago. They'll remember the you that didn't, you know, own the home or didn't possess the things or see or and, and listen, that's OK. That's OK if they do. And that's OK if 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 you're having to walk through something like that by faith in God, what's not OK is if you or me are listening to messages and we're we're going somewhere in God and we're not in that position, that postured place of God first, people next, and having that revelation of maturity to walk this relationship out in this life. Amen. So God is getting the attention of his body of believers. Absolutely. The, one of the first things he's dealing with is division in the church, division with his people, division in the homes. You know, it, this, this man is a, He's brilliant. John Maxwell is absolutely a gift to the body of Christ. Leadership. I read his, I read his um, 101, I think it was, um, leadership tips years ago when I first started as a youth pastor. That book came across my, um, my desk, and I read it. I read most of it. It's powerful. I think I gave it to some of the, the youth leaders coming up. And here he is, January 1st, 2022, along with several leaders, proclaiming that a, a divisive people devalue people. Like, how can we devalue? He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Listen, if we're devaluing the people that are around us or trying to help us or grow with us, if we're devaluing them, then we have not learned how to value our own life that God has given us. Amen. I remember there was a topic brought up on suicide. Well, where is it in the Bible? Well, and they were going back and forth about it. And I said, listen, thou shalt not murder. One of the Ten Commandments that Moses specifically went and brought back. And now Jesus in the New Testament, who has fulfilled every commandment. So thou shalt not matter. Murder is fulfilled in Christ has now said if you hate in your heart, you have committed the act of murder just by hating somebody. That's what I'm taught. Don't let people pull scriptures out. And you, if you're doing that, repent and ask God to help you to cling to the cross and to mature your identity in him and raise you up that you can help other people when the truth sets you free. Me, us. Amen. Amen. So I told those people, I said, suicide is murder. 
Suicide is murder. When you take your life, you're murdering life. So you're saying to God, what you gave me doesn't matter. If you think suicide thoughts, you got to rebuke spirits. Rebuke them. I told you I rebuked that dream. You're not coming anywhere near my temple. Out. Out. I don't know how I found it. It found its way, but it's done now. In Jesus' name, it's out. No more. And if I need to learn something from it, God, let me learn from it. Amen. All right, so let's read this. Now, I want to say, God gave me this. I heard it. Crushed, pressed, <laughs> persecuted on every side. This is us, his children, his people. And, you know, that's immature and mature. We go through seasons with people in our lives and people in the church, um, on the job. Oh, my gosh, I know somebody that's dealing with it heavily on the job. Um, oh, I turned my page. Here we go. So... This is what I heard, but then, oh my goodness, I heard something so beautiful. So I went up a verse from it. So we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 4, but I want to read 6, and then I'll go into what I had heard. I heard this of the Lord. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of, of the glory of God, which is radiant, the radiance, the radiant glory in the face of Jesus Christ. So just as Moses' face, the glory of God shone upon the face of Moses. And here it says the glory of God, that radiant glory was in the face of Jesus Christ. And now you and I are created in the likeness of Christ. In the image of Almighty God, He has created us. So He intends for the countenance. This takes us back to the priestly blessing. Shine your face upon me. Be good to me. So now, upon our faces, each one of us, the glory of Christ, the glory. And look, he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Even here, if they persecute you, we're hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, yet not despair, persecuted, but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of our lord jesus that the life of jesus may also be manifested in our body so that purity and truth of christ is going to be revealed through our intimacy with him through the crushing through the you know the the mocking the scoffing That ridicule, the things that they, the very things, and what what you see, you don't you don't need to see an enemy, except Satan as the enemy. What you can see is the poverty place that that person is, or those people, they're in lack, they're in a place of spiritual poverty, of not knowing the goodness of God for themselves. So, Father, we just thank you now for your word, for your message, God. As you're bringing this word through many leaders, through correction to the body of Christ, through our families and our homes, us as Christians and believers, that we will stand against divisiveness, that will bind and rebuke division, that will just push it far from us, help us to do our part, strengthen us inside, God. On the inside, renew, revive, Wash us clean internally, Lord, that we may know your your glory, the radiance of, of your face shining, the holiness, the joy, the righteousness, the peace, God. Every gift you've ever purposed us to have, the fruits coming out of your life. That, God, when the enemy tries to use our loved ones or tries to come through those voices or the TV screen or the job or the boss, that you yourself, God, will highlight 
the glory of your position in our hearts and lives, that you'll just enrich and increase and enlarge our visitation time with you. Wash any residue of unforgiveness off of us, any words or curses spoken, God. Yeah, we just come against the insults. We come against the suggestions, the lies, the witchcraft of working your word and in ill-willed motives. And we reject any any messages or any words or, or uh, even sermons that are done out of the wrong motive, God. We push it back. We say no in Jesus' name. The leaders of our nations who have spoke things, God, that are contrary to, to heaven's voice, to the words of wisdom, to the word of truth. We invite in the word of truth. The word of truth tells us a different story, tells us we're healed, tells us we're worthy, we're forgiven, tells us we've been washed clean of the shame and guilt, that we're no longer slaves to fear, God. Love us so much that Father, you become our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, our uncle, our aunt, our daughter, our son. That you become the very fruit of love that, that we so desire from the relationships around us, God. That you, we right now, we yeah, we confess that we love you with all that we are, God. Train us from this place of positional authority with you, of sonship, of being a daughter, of being a child of light children of the day god in this hour where everybody's got an opinion and voicing this and that and 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 lying and moving about in this world with with ill-willed intentions and and wrong leadership motives i pray father that you raise us up in the heart of jobs and careers and the courthouses and the congress and the schools and cities and um, marketplaces churches that you raise us up send us into the highways and byways in the authority of who you are covered mantled in righteousness clothed in protection love is our banner holy spirit armor in place position with keys to the lost to the weary to the hungry to the homeless to those in the senior centers in the abortion clinics to the police and, and military and first responders, angels come and camp around us in our household, those that are working with the Lord and working for the good of society, community, people gathered together, angels of the Most High. We just pray an angel for each one assigned to every person, all of your creation, experiencing the host of heaven in battle with flaming swords, taking up the places before us that were yet to go and protecting us all around, wrap around shield of your presence, God, your holiness and angel armies for the journey to each one, God, the United States of America being secure because of you, Lord. Your mighty hand upon your people, Lord, in the church, the bride, cleansed, ready, renewed, revived, without wrinkle, without spot, obedient, subservient to the head, our, our groom, Lord Jesus, our husband, Abba, Father, Prince of Peace, mighty God. Thank you, Father, for your hand on this generation. Though there be no gap. No separation, no spirit of divisiveness, division, conquering in your name, victorious, the blood of Christ. We apply it right now from the crown down. We apply the blood to our households, to every family member, to this generation, to the people of God. We plead the blood. We speak it. We proclaim it. We apply it. It lives, it speaks, the blood is alive. The blood is our source of cleansing, washed in the blood, set apart, sanctified. Yes, Lord, your word be in our, our lamp, God, that lights our path, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your answers. Every cry, every heart, in all your creation, north, south, east, and west, everything on this side of heaven through the atmospheres young and old rich and poor small and great creature the creatures of the of the woods of the forest our own personal pets the domesticated cats and dogs the birds the fish the lions the tigers god your people your creation everything that has breath experiencing you 
those unborn babies, even witnessing there in the womb their place of safety. By the awesome hand of who you are, God, no weapon formed against the babies. Right now we just come against every sickness, disease, curse, lie, deception, every trickery, every sleight of man, every decision made apart from you, God. Our loyalty is to you. We reject the fowler. We reject the enemy's schemes and plans right now, God. In the face of who you are, we confess our great need, coming boldly to the throne of grace, petitioning your forgiveness, your healing, your restoration, your repair, your miracles, signs, wonders, God, that we would go forth with healing hands, with deliverance and mighty works of your greatness and power in your name, proclaiming you as Lord, declaring your promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Bless each one. Bless our seniors, bless our marriages, the husbands and wives, the families, covenant promises to the households and faith, to the believers, God, to the lost souls coming forth, the prodigals finding their way, backsliders, strays, waywards, that highway of holiness just there, an aha moment to the homeless, visitation of your spirit god labors and to the north south east and west into the mission fields to the hungry to the thirsty to the weary soldier on to those that need a word in due season the lord is your strength the lord is your source he's your deliverer he sets us free yes lord greater wisdom revelation knowledge, a revealing of who you are, dreams, visions of you, clear eyes, clear ears, soundness of mind, no fear, no dementia, no disease, named illness, Alzheimer's, go in Jesus' name, go. Side effects, symptoms, God, we speak and call forth creative miracles into our organs, our immune system, our blood the mind, the will, and the emotions, the soul, from the crown down, sanctified, washed clean, resurrection, glory, yes, DNA of Christ, blood covenant, blood bought, blood sought. We're here, God, by the spirit of power and unity, by who you are, truth, truth over each one of us, God. Healing to the widows, the orphans, families, homes, fellowship, friendship, Miracles, God, send them, Father. May the angels take up the willing vessels to go into the earth and do your bidding, your calling, your will and your ways. Your kingdom come, your will be done here in earth, in us as it is in heaven. Daily bread, complete restoration, total repair, mighty deliverance, rivers of life, generational blessings truth, honor, glory. Hallelujah. Bless each one, God. Set us apart. Creative ideas, miracles, businesses, prospering, enlarging, equipping, greater revelation, righteousness, peace, victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus hungering and thirsting. Put that in us, God. That desire, all things are possible with you. Get our attention to how we're to walk, live. Thank you, God. You are worthy. Worthy is the King. Righteous Prince. Oh, thank you, God. Seal and settle our prayers. Hedge us in. Be with us your voice. Hearing your voice. Discerning your spirit discerning of spirits god we reject lies right now one for another cleanse us god creating us a clean heart pure hands we stand before you anything unconfessed unrecognized unwilling we stand here unspoken come in fellowship with us god soul mind spirit body born again set apart 
fit for the master's use us this generation the people of our of our households our families our friends our relatives the strangers we cross paths with god thank you jesus nation to nation sea to sea ocean to ocean valley mountains rivers jungles woods all your creation everything that has breath from the creatures the animals to the unborn babies, to those children being violated, abused, to the women and men and seniors, set the captives free, God. Mighty deliverance in your people through the earth to all the cries and prayers, the intercessors, the gatherings, the preachers, the teachers, the evangelists, God. To all your creation, God. Your spirit is life. Your word is truth. We worship you today, God. And the fruit of who you are. Thank you, Jesus, for meeting the needs, salvation, forgiveness, wholeness good news finding us yeah i pray that that good news finds us blessings chase us down goodness and mercy overflow the cup that god has given us the table prepared as we sit as we gather our rightful place yeah taking your place the table belongs to the lord and we are his guest and his servant the angels, the messengers, heaven's call, the gifts and fruit. Walk us through, God, eyes open, ears hearing, sight restored, God. Thank you, Jesus. Seal and settle our prayers. This is your day. We worship and honor you, God. Have your way. May there be God's substance in everything we say and do today. Fill our cups, guard our hearts, teach us how to stand guard, how to watch. Teach us, fill us with the love of who you are, the wisdom and understanding, God. Here we are willing, you have access, permission. We deny ourselves taking up this cross in pursuit of you and all that you are. We say yes, God to learning and growing and multiplying and being fruitful. We say yes to your will and your kingdom and all that you have. Thank you, Jesus, opening up the windows, the portals, the places, God, of learning. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless each one, God, our families. Your mighty hand upon our families in the hospitals, doctors, nurses, who clear those beds out by divine, miraculous healing over this COVID and other named illnesses. We just declare and plead and proclaim and speak and call forth and announce the kingdom, the king the blood covenant, the place of protection, the holiness of God, the deliverance, the beauty for where there once was ashes, the joy and the oil for where sadness thought it had a place. Yeah, God, reverse the curse, Jesus. We drive back the curses named over our cities, our nations, our states, the economy, our churches, the curses, the curse words spoken, the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. Rule and reign, Jesus. Our King conquers. Heal the land, God. Tear down the images and the false gods. Move in signs and wonders the generation, God. Yeah, protecting us, merciful King. 
Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You are worthy. Yes, Lord, the schools, the teachers, the government, the military, every position in this earth, every title, every office, all your creation, us here today, and all those that we're standing for, and all things that pertain to us. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Favor, open doors of you, God. Above only. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Sealed and settled in the mighty name of Jesus, more than conquerors, victorious in Christ, ambassadors, soldiers, sons and daughters, children of the Most High God, his chosen, his elect, his royal priesthood, kings and priests, citizenship of heaven, us and him, one with the Lord. Yes, Jesus, thank you, God. Bring it in, Father. and riches, treasures of who you are, your power and your excellence. Yeah, we just decree these things to be established in the awesomeness of who you are, mighty God. Yes, Jesus, you are who you say you are. kingdom come, your will be done. Praise you, Jesus. More of you, less of us. More of all that you have. God, we invite you. Invite your plans. Welcome you. The provision, the protection, the grace. Yes, Lord. Make us stewards for your glory. Teach us to steward well. To be bold and courageous in conflict. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. King Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Let's see what we got here. The kingdom of God is at hand. Holy Spirit is our helper. Yeah, a comforter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful testimony. Yep. Treasures in clay. Oh, it's not going up for some reason. Huh. That's strange. Spirit break out. King Jesus, you're the name we're lifting high. Yeah, post that, Crystal. Post that on soldiers, too, if you don't mind. Yep, spirit, break out. Hallelujah, break out, spirit, in our lives, hearts, relationships, families, jobs, careers, finances. Have a spiritual breakout. Heaven's, heaven's rewards. Come on, crowns, treasures of the Lord. Equip us, God. Strengthen us today, better than before, stronger. Yes, Jesus. 
Oh, man. All right. Love you all. God's blessings. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.